So if I'm approaching an account, you know, first thing I like to do is just find out um, what days do you take visitor sales calls? Um, generally, you'll probably get told a lot of, well, I'm not really interested right now. Mm -hmm. So for those type of accounts, probably just get in a rhythm to say, hey, every week you're just gonna kind of drop by. It might take three or four times to approach an account before you get an opening to say, okay, let's bring you in. This is Sid Patel here, live from Chicago. We are at the sixth annual Sommelier's Choice Awards. And I'm gonna chat, you know, a role of a trainer here, the role of an educator, especially when it comes to the wine distributor. I'm here with Brian Cozio. He's a master sommelier. You know, uh, he brings a lot of uh, technical and sales education to the sales forces, right? So we really will hear from him on what kind of different things, uh, if you are a small and medium distributor, especially if you cannot afford a full-time trainer, you know, what can you start implementing, right? So Brian, thanks for joining me here. Thank you, Sid, and glad to be here. Uh, amazing accomplishment to be on the sixth year Thank you. Uh, here doing the Sound Choice Awards, and I'm glad to be here for actually my first, and uh, fantastic job that you guys have uh, orchestrated today for us. Great, appreciate it. So on you know, the, the subject of uh, you know, the distribution, you know, it's, it's a very tough business, right? So especially for the small and medium-sized company as they're scaling up, one of the things that I personally think that the biggest challenge is to retain salespeople, to, to motivate salespeople, and to recruit brands that are easy for salespeople to sell. So initially, mm -hmm. when you start out, yes. it's going to be a tough sell, right? So <laughs> it's, it's like a it's loop. quite funny how the small or mid-sized distributorships usually you're working with brands that you're really selling stories uh, for a lot of uh, the players that you represent uh, versus some of the larger wholesalers who probably have more established brands. And it's kind of like the opposite. Yeah, exactly. You think exactly. That. So really, you know, what I wind up really seeing for a lot of individuals is. You know, for sales, and especially to teach people right off the bat is, people need patience, mm -hmm. they need resiliency, mm -hmm. because you're gonna get told no a lot. Mm -hmm. Even as a master sommelier, me going out and work in the market, uh, who crafted beverage programs, mm -hmm. many of my peers, mm -hmm. we all get rejected along the journey. And mm -hmm. that's a little hard for people to kind of grasp because most people come into their sales role mm -hmm. and they're really excited about it. And you want, need to find a way to keep nurturing that excitement in mm -hmm. people. Uh, but just challenging people to say, hey, every day you got to get out there and more so than ever, uh, finding ways to just touch base with each one of your clients. Mm -hmm. Get to know them, uh, get a feel for um, structuring a day. I like to tell people, you know, you got to have a plan for the week mm -hmm. because if you start the week with a plan, mm -hmm. In our business, a week is always going to change with each and every day, mm -hmm. but with a plan you can kind of stay on track mm -hmm. and at the end of the week you just want to kind of revisit your plan and see how well did you execute it and how well did you um, make accomplishments on touching as many clients as you possibly mm -hmm. can during the course of the day. Understood. And I think with, with new people, you know, that's the hard thing is that they get probably a little bit more overwhelmed. They from the plans as yeah. well. And, uh, within our business, whether it's the combination of you know, working through delivery challenges, uh, there might be payment issues with, with clients, mm -hmm. uh, it could be that you have to manage um, out of stock situations. Mm -hmm. And so you're juggling a lot of hats mm -hmm. uh, in order to make sure that your customers are taken care of mm -hmm. while still meeting your business demands that you have to take care mm -hmm. of for yourselves. Um, I encourage people to always have goals. Mm -hmm. uh, set yourself with uh, a scale of ambition that's even maybe just push yourself a little bit you know, further. Uh, but right off the bat, teaching new people, they need patience, they need to be resilient, and they need to have a structured plan because there you can manage the challenges that you're going to face on a weekly basis. Got it. So let's go on, uh, sort of deep dive into the main training modules and so, an on onboarding journey, right? So, you know, uh, we hire four people and I give it to you now. Yeah. All right, Brian, the first two weeks are yours, right? So how do you onboard? What kind of modules? What are, what are the first 14 days of that sales rep in, in a distribution company? Sure. Well, I think that the first thing is, is you have to understand your territory. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to group territories out because many people just probably aren't going to have a list of restaurants or retail stores that will be lined up right next to Especially one another. Especially if it's the first time, right? So they, 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 won't, they may not know. They can know. have some geography that they might have to cover. Okay. And so I would encourage people to first kind of plot out your territory All right. uh, so you have a feel for who your 
customers are. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, you know, just try and make sure that, okay, how many of those customers can I get contact information from? Because mm -hmm. I want to work things So a start building of database on that territory. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good base there. Uh, the second base then is, uh, once you understand a little bit about your clients and their geography, where they're located, uh, maybe if you can understand just a little bit about some sales history, if your organization does track sales history for accounts, maybe kind of categorize some of those accounts based on mm -hmm. accounts that probably I should focus on on a you know, weekly basis. Here's accounts that can do second. Mm -hmm. uh, here's maybe some accounts that I should prospect. Mm -hmm. Maybe here's some just accounts that we're just going to kind of maintain them. So classify your accounts. Yep. Okay. Uh, second thing is, man, you got to grasp your portfolio because I truly believe knowledge is power in our industry. Mm -hmm. uh, find out though, you know, what are your your keys and what's the, I say, your genome of what your portfolio is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So if your portfolio is, we are a California-driven uh, portfolio, mm -hmm. sure, then dive into that mm -hmm. and really get to know you know what makes your California driven mm -hmm. portfolio be unique mm -hmm. uh, so that you can go out there and sell that story mm -hmm. uh, likewise if you just have wines from around the world mm -hmm. then maybe you got to kind of broaden your, your horizons I always tell people to say hey when it comes down to it there are certain things that everybody needs mm -hmm. um, everyone needs a good Chardonnay everyone needs a good Cabernet mm -hmm. uh, so know what are your leads so that you can identify like your door the, openers, which are which can absolutely. have width, like everyone can have that exactly. And with that, you know, then start to think about then what are some more of the unique products that you have mm -hmm. in your portfolio, so mm -hmm. that you know you can kind of maybe open up the door to say, hey, I got something that's kind of new. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I think uh, that I would encourage people right off the bat, their first two weeks is, that's a time to listen. Mm -hmm. It's not a time to pitch, mm -hmm. and so. Get a feel for your territory, get a feel for your portfolio, so, so and let's ask questions. Let's go there. Questions. Like, what are the three or four questions you would ask mm -hmm. to be a good listener? Yeah. So, if I'm approaching an account, you know, first thing I like to do is just find out um, what days do you take visitor sales calls? Um, generally, you'll probably get told a lot of, well, I'm not really interested right now. Mm -hmm. So, for those type of accounts, probably just get in a rhythm to say, hey, every week you're just going to kind of drop by. It might take three or four times to approach an account before you get an opening to say, mm -hmm. okay, let's bring you in. Mm -hmm. The second thing would be is, you know, naturally, uh, tell me just a little about what makes your beverage program unique, what makes your beverage program uh, special to the course of uh, your clients. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular needs, you know, that you need, mm -hmm. uh, you know, filled within your program? Uh, might even ask, what's working uh, mm -hmm. for, for you? Um, not necessarily saying, hey, I noticed that you're missing something on your wine list mm -hmm. that I can probably offer you. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even ask some people to say, hey, what's some of your favorite, uh, whether it's wine, spirits, mm -hmm. beer, whatever it is, what are some of your favorites? Mm -hmm. uh, so that at least you kind of keep an idea of, okay, these individuals what? like this. Got it. Um, so a lot of questions mm -hmm. uh, versus pitching uh, or recommendations. Just sit back and listen mm -hmm. uh, to what the buyers mm -hmm. are going to present you. Mm -hmm. Got it. And so we are, you know, we've done that, that first phase of listening, database gathering. Now mm -hmm. comes the, the pitch training, you know, how to sell, sure. you know, how, what a cold call should look like, how is an approach to the retail, you know, how are you handling objections, you know, so let's go into that nitty gritty or, or what kind of five or six objections you can throw as an example and how to overcome them. Yeah. Well, I think probably the first one is I'm not interested. Yep. Um, then it might you know turn around to say, well, you know, what are some interests that, that you do have? Mm -hmm. um, one, I'm going to be consistent to, to show up, and that's part of our mm. uh, the big change of our industry is showing up each and every week. Uh, right. So as you, I think, create consistency to come, yeah. and just tell people, hey, I got a rolodex of products that I'm going to show you, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to work my portfolio, and hopefully one day we do find a match. Uh -huh. I like to tell people that just because you presented something that week, it might not be the wrong thing to present. Mm -hmm. It just might be the wrong timing. So True. I like to say, put it back on the shelf, yep. uh, but work on your understanding your, you know, what makes that product unique, a little bit about it. The other big thing too is I think in our business today is really know the financials. Mm -hmm. You know, how does a product possibly work? Um, 
one of the other questions if we go back, mm -hmm. maybe just ask the buyers uh, at the very beginning, hey, what type of margins mm -hmm. do you like to typically work on? Yeah. Um, maybe you can even kind of scan their wine program. Yeah. And you can start to figure out, can, yeah. okay, you know, they kind of are you know, swimming where probably they're looking for wines typically between $10 and $15 mm -hmm. wholesale. That translates to their wine list maybe at uh, possibly like between forty and sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. So hey, if that's their swim lane, let me make sure that I'm bringing products True. within that standpoint. But as you're getting that rejection of hey, I'm not interested in this, maybe just ask them to say, what did you not particularly uh, like about that mm. product? Mm. And maybe you'll get a feel then about some things that you know maybe the uh, the buyer says, hey, I really don't like. Um, uh, wines that have a lot of uh, oak influence because just our menu doesn't kind of mm. you know, coincide to, to have that. Mm. And you maybe get a feel. Maybe one thing could also be, you know, ask individuals, hey, what kind of uh, pairing profile uh, mm -hmm. do you really technically like to work with? And mm -hmm. then you can maybe even start to True. You can narrow down your, your offerings approach. and your portfolio right. by just literally, yeah. right? But, uh, uh, and then on, on that, Thing, which is objections and you know so on like there is a there is a, some room that you'll have to give your sales rep right like maybe first year they only expect two thousand dollars of sales next year next month sorry not first year first month yes. next month is five thousand then fifteen thousand so just throw some numbers on how you uh, do it at memory let's say yeah. uh, what kind of after three months you will evaluate hard and yes and no make a decision yeah I think one, it all depends on territory. So if you're getting a territory that is a developed territory, okay. we're going to probably push people and So if say, someone is getting an existing business of accounts? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So if you get existing business, we're going to probably challenge you a little bit more. Understood. Uh, chances are you're going to have the opportunity to probably get a feel for customers because they're going to probably be giving you some orders right off the yeah. bat. And those are the customers that you got to really touch base with right away and prove your value that you're going to be there. You're going to get your orders right. I always like to make sure that I tell individuals that once it leaves our distributorship, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we got clean invoices. Uh, the other big thing that I like to it, what do you mean people, clean invoices? Um, that pricing's right. So meaning no under the table deals here and there kind of stuff? Or? Not under the table deals, but just making sure that if they were quoted a price of say ah, $15. So it's not that, like he said, she said, oh, John told me this price and in invoices. That we're, we're getting our pricing right. I understand. Uh, the other thing too, especially in the wine trade, uh, vintages matter. Oh, yeah. And you know, identifying to the customers when vintages are changing, you know, being upfront with up them front. to say, hey, I saw that you know recently you were getting the 2021 yeah, vintage of that, that Cabernet, and we've just transitioned on to the 2020. So that when the buyer comes in and they're going to check their inventory, true. that they don't see the s switch yeah. when they got the cases that you're identifying right at the very beginning. I there understand. I think you start to build trust yes. with the course of the buyer. Now on the other side, if we have a, uh, a territory that, mm -hmm. let's say it's a development territory, mm -hmm. there it's probably more about not necessarily how much sales we're going to get off the bat. It's more about how many orders can we receive? Like new accounts open? New accounts. How many accounts are we opening? Okay. Uh, how many accounts then are getting reorders from okay. us? And so that's kind of a, a situation where we're going to say the dollars are going to build once we make sure that we're established with an account mm -hmm. run. And what kind of people you put in the old kind of accounts and what kind of personalities are you putting for the new uh, go and hunt? Uh, we, we like hunters in both territories okay. when it comes down to it. Right. Um, mainly because, um, and you know, a lot of different sales There's personalities always a new account. Do, do, do work differently. Um, but we always like to say that um, we want people that are driven, we want people that are gonna challenge themselves, mm. we want people that are not af afraid. Um, like in some ways I say, you gotta have tough skin, you can't be afraid, you have to be ambitious, and because you gotta keep knocking on a door, uh, and that's our, our business. But I think there's a nice way to do things with a, um, a, a hospitality background to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, because... Like you're a great seen, example as well, yeah. We're selling to hospitalians. Yeah, you've seen the other side. And then, so you, it, I think you, you're seeing a value to bring people of experience on the other side. Yeah. Especially knowing that, um, you know, today a lot of buyers are wearing a lot of hats. Yeah, you know, true. They can be facing, you know, the um, uh, individuals calling out for their shifts. Uh, it could be uh, that some of their orders got uh, errors in, the, mm -hmm. in their orders that, that have just come through. Uh, it could be that there's a lot of pressure in regards to you know, what the um, uh, 
reservations look like tonight you know, uh, versus true. the staffing that you have. Yeah. So you have to be kind of understanding to yeah. the course of the buyers, uh, to be flexible, to know when you should be pushing, when you should be just accepting, true, true. when you should be encouraging. So the more you can develop rapport with your people naturally, uh, the more opportunities come for you to have doors open for you. But entering that first phase of building a territory, it just takes resilience and it cons takes consistency mm. uh, to, to show up. The other big thing too is, is you know, today uh, it's a 24-7 mm -hmm. type of job. Mm. And you, you have to give the service to your buyer, right? Exactly. Especially because a lot of our buyers, you, know, you look at a lot of restaurants, hotels definitely, yeah. they're open yeah. 365 days a year. Yeah. Uh, so you're always, you're working when they're working. Mm. Uh, and when they're not working, you're probably doing your homework yeah. uh, so that you can execute when you get that opportunity when the door opens. Mm. True. One last one on the sales side, right? What kind of three or four things that you commonly hear from the reps to you? Because maybe they're not telling to their manager or the boss, but you are their friend, right? Right. So uh, what kind of things that you always see that they need help on? Yeah. So I think probably first off, it's whatever organization you're, you're working in, there's probably a system in regards to understanding how either products are coded in their inventory, mm -hmm. how to recognize inventory, probably how to have a feel for what products should I recommend to mm -hmm. the course of an account? Mm -hmm. Or let's say I'm, I'm pursuing a buy the glass pour. You know, you want to make sure that you have inventory that is backed up that you know that if you just sell it uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to the buyer and they're going to reorder that mm -hmm. you're just not sitting with maybe three or four cases on hand. Mm. Those products have Understood. a role. Yeah, but uh, you know. You can target those for maybe buy the glass points. Yeah. Maybe it's a quick feature. So understanding that balance of how mm, your inventory point. program works so that you can be recommending things that won't put you in a bad position, position yeah. if a customer gets behind I think the intent of the distribution house has to be communicated clearly that this is a one-time blowout mm. deal or this is a, a, a going out, like we're not going to reorder this. But it, that transparency has or to come. Or we're in a transition. We're, yeah, we're, we're running to the, you know, the final stage of that vintage. Yep. And we have fresh goods coming. Uh, the other thing too sometimes is, you know, what is the products that we have fluidity of inventory? Mm -hmm. What are items that come in with um, specialness in regards to? We usually have probably a three, four month window. So mm -hmm. understanding that balance of how your inventory works is, is highly important. And then I think the other you know, key thing is, is you know, what are, um, uh, your key suppliers, what are your, your, your key producers that you mm -hmm. have? Uh, we all basically you know, know that there are certain individuals that bring a lot of relevance to our True. portfolios. Yeah. So you want to have a good feel for those so yeah. that you're making recommendations. Uh, but when it's all said and done, you still always want to try and find what's the right fit for the account, the buyer, yeah. um, especially when you're starting to build yourself in a territory. Lead with that. Uh, and then eventually you'll find ways to work your other products in yeah. uh, that are your, your priorities, uh, your go-tos, because you've got to just establish a foundation Absolutely. with your buyers. Yeah, I think that's the key. I mean, uh, first comes the retailer because that is the only constant sort of which will happen between your business, right? Absolutely. P products may come and go ultimately, but your account is the account which you have to service.